Alright, so in this video, I'm going to go over the NumPy module in Python. So NumPy is good to do different things with arrays, uh, especially multi-dimensional arrays. So it's going to be good when you're dealing with linear algebra. Uh, it supports different math functions. It also has things that are good for just basic stats. So we'll jump right into it. So as you can see here, I'm um, using a virtual environment. Uh, you could check out my video that I'll post up there about it. Um, so we're going to have, going to import NumPy as NP here. So again, you could call this anything you want. By default, most people call this NP. And then what we're going to do is initialize an array. And in this case, we're going to make a 1D array with numbers one, two, three. So we're just gonna print A. And if we run this, you can see it prints out array one, two, three, right? So we could also um, make a multi-dimensional array. So we could have something like this. You're gonna have additional set of um, numbers here. So let's say four, five, six, and then seven, eight, nine, and then you're going to have the outer brackets closing it. So if I run this, you see that it prints a two-dimensional array. So this is good if you want to define a matrix, right? And you could do other things too. So like, let's say we wanted to find the shape of uh, your shape of your matrix. You could do print a dot shape, for example. And if I run this, you see that it's a three by three, right? And other things you could do is if you want to index or get specific parts like sub matrix of your uh, matrix, you could do, for example, print A, if I want to get the number it's zero index. So uh, what this will get is the three, three, three element or if you zero indexes the two, two. I'm just gonna clear this for more space. And then maybe you want to print a sub matrix. So I'm gonna have A zero to two and then zero to two. And if I run this, you can see that I'm gonna get the sub matrix up on top, okay? So notice that it's not including two, it's gonna be element zero, one going across, zero, one going down. So if you wanted the full thing, you could do zero to three, right? And if I run this, you see that it prints out the whole matrix, okay? So that's how you do that. And then you could do other things too. So you can create uh, an array of numbers that have a start, stop, and step size. So with that, you would use the mp dot arrange function and you pass in start, stop, step size. And if I print out, if I print that out, you're gonna see the numbers. So I have one, three, five, seven, nine. And there's also another function which is kind of similar but a little bit different. It's called mp.linspace. And what this does instead is you also define star stop, but now you define the number of points. So if I say 1, 10, and 4, for example, it's going to automatically calculate the step size. And you can see it's going to be 1, 4, 7, 10. OK, so that's lint space over here. Um, and then you also could do different things with like the functions that's provided like the, the math functions, like trig functions, for example, you have sine, cosine, log, exponential. So you could do something like mp.cosine of one. This will give you what cosine equals to at that value. So you can see it prints out you know, 0.5. And you can also do uh, cosine of a array of numbers. So I could do a equals mp.cosine and then say mp a range, let's say 0 to 1 with 0.1 step. And if I run this, you can see it prints out a bunch of numbers. Okay, Let me just clear and run it again. You can see up on top. So you can see all the numbers with the specified increment. Okay. 
So after that, you have um, you can also s initialize matrices of different sizes. So sometimes you might want to make like a zero matrix, a ones matrix, for example. So that is pretty simple. You could do mp dot zeros, for example. So when you pass in a tuple like a two three, you'll get a two dimensional zeros matrix. So here is a two by three zeros matrix. But you can also pass in just one number, so like mp dot zeros five, and what do you think that will give you? So that's going to give you a one D array of five values. Okay, so the same logic will apply for the ones. So I could do like a equals mp dot ones, and again pass in two three, and if I run that, you see that it's going to give me a bunch of ones. And if I do the same thing, mp dot ones, and pass in one number, you can see it's a uh, 1D, okay? So with the full matrix function, you can actually fill up a matrix with some number you want. And for the first argument, the same rule applies, but now you're going to add one extra argument, which is the number you actually want to have your matrix fill up. So here I want a matrix of 10. So you can see 10 gets printed out. And again, you could have uh, like a one-dimensional one, for example. You're just going to pass in a number for the first input, and you can see I get two tens of a 1D array. Okay, And then you can also create like an identity matrix. You could have a mp.i. So maybe I want a 3 by 3 identity matrix. And if I run this, you can see it's an identity matrix. So identity matrix by default is going to be a 2 by 2 matrix. So you don't have to specify a tuple like we did for the other ones. Okay. And a numpy can also support like random numbers. So you could do a equals mp dot random dot rand. And you could pass in a two, for example. And if you do that, it'll give you two numbers. And maybe you want to have more. So you could do uh, two comma three. This will give you a matrix. You can see it's a matrix of random numbers. That's two by three. And then you can also use the n for the Gaussian distribution. It's going to be normalized, so you can see that uh, it passes you number. So when it's normalized, the mean is 0, and then it has a variance of 1. Okay. So other things you might be interested in doing is things like um, transposing. So here you might do a equals mp dot transpose of a. So if I run this, this will actually flip my matrix. So you can see instead of a 2 by 3, now it's a 3 by 2 matrix. Okay, So that might be useful when you're transposing, doing operations in linear algebra. And you also have functions that can help you reshape. So um, in this case, let's say we have um, a equals mp dot reshape. So here, let's make a array here. We're going to make a 1, 2, 3. So in this case, before we show the reshape, let's, let's try the transpose method on this. So if we do mp dot transpose, uh, pass in a, before I print the transpose one. If I show you printing the normal one, you see it's one, two, three, right? Let me clear this and run it again so you could move it on top. So you can see it's one, two, three, right? But if I transpose this because it's a 1D array, um, what will happen is it actually stays the same. So it's also one, two, three. So that gets a little bit tricky when you try to think of like a row and then you want to convert it to a column vector. It doesn't really work with transpose, unfortunately. Um, what you can do instead is use the reshape function. So you could do a equals mp dot reshape, and then pass in a, and then 3, 1, for example. So this will make it into a, yeah, there you go. Now it's a column vector. Okay. OK, so other things you could do is like a dot product. So I'm going to call this matrix here b. And then maybe you want to do the dot product. You could do a equals mp dot dot, and then pass in b comma b. So if I run this, 
you can see that as 14, which makes sense. And you can also ma multiply matrices. So the stop product is like a specific case where you like multiply one times the transpose of the other. But in this case, if you just want to multiply any matrix, you could use the matmol function. Uh, but here we're going to put, we're just going to create like an array, 2D array of, let's just use what we had here up on top. So we're going to use this matrix and then call it B. And then what we're going to do is multiply the matrix together. So we're going to say A equals um, MP dot mat mole. So it's like matrix multiply, pass in the Bs twice. And then if we multiply the two matrices and print it out, you can see the results of the two matrix multiplication. And another shorthand is to actually do this uh, at symbol, which I really like, makes your code a lot cleaner. If you run that, you can see that it gives you the same result. Okay, so uh, you choose whatever you want. Uh, I personally prefer this. So yeah, just try out, try out both ways. And there's many more linear algebra functions you can do. So you could do things like finding the inverse of a function. So maybe we have a mp dot random dot rand. And pass in three by three, and then if I say mp dot lin, so lin algebra is a like another module inside NumPy, and then you could do things like inverse. So if I get the inverse of my B matrix, uh, you could see that you get these values for the inverse. And for those that's interested, you guys can try multiplying the matrix by its inverse. You should get the identity. And you could also do um, things like eigenvalue for those really um, people who really love linear algebra. You could do like linalg.eig, you could pass in B, and you could, you could see the eigenvalues. Okay. And then other things you could do that's like more stats based for those into stats, you could do things like. Um, average, min, max. So let's say I created a b equals mp dot random dot rand n and 100. And I could do a equals mp dot average of b. So this will give me the average of this value. So maybe I put a few more numbers in here. I'll pass in 1,000. So like we said, the Gaussian distribution is going to be the mean of zero. So technically, we have more numbers. You can see the mean will get closer to zero, right? So there's more zeros up here. But we'll just leave it at like a thousand. And you can also find, like I said, you could do min, for example. And if I pass in b, so you could, should probably see like a negative number, like three. Okay. And then you could do the same thing, but with max. So here I'm going to pass in max. And if I run this, you see that I got like a 2.74, okay? So that wraps up the NumPy tutorial. Uh, you learn about how to create matrices, initialize matrices of you know special cases like zero, ones, full, you can make random. Uh, there's certain math functions that's available you could use, you could transpose, and then there's a couple of linear algebra functions that are pretty useful, and you could have some basic stats functions. And for a Complete list, you could just do mp dot again, and you could see all the functions available. There's documentation online too for those that's interested in more. But this gives a good summary of the basic ones you'll need. And hopefully this helps. Give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.